Earlier in the year, we've made a video comparing the performance of a ceramic coated insulative coating to normal white paint. In the comment session, we received a lot of questions asking about the different performance of various color of roofing. And one of the more interesting questions is what about the bare synchronous roofing? Because you asked the question, we are responding to that. And this is a follow-up video comparing different color and mixing. In this video, we are going to compare a lot of different colors of the roof coating. To create this rig, we have 14 different samples, various in color and content of the paint. Because of this, we've created a special rig that got 14 different thermocouples. And we use the most sensitive thermocouples, the Type T thermocouples, together with a combined data logger we got all 14 channels showing together how their temperatures are changing. And we also got the air temperature sample shaded from the sun to give us the comparison on how much each color is elevated from the air temperature. We've created 14 samples because we want to focus on the different shade. These are more like the grayscale color that we've chosen. The first set is the Monument, which is very, very popular in the new development area. But I think soon it will be outlawed by our building code because they are way too dark for a more comfort and sustainable development. And then we got the Evening Haze, Wallaby, which is a much lighter shade already. And then the Surf Mist. And then it comes to the different types of white. And last but not least, the bare synchronum, which is one of our viewers specifically asked us what about their performance. And it is a very, very interesting sample. Following on from the previous video, we also trying to compare would the ceramic coating have an impact when the sample is in different color. The way how we did it, we use a ceramic bead additive in a powder form. We mix that into the common paints that we can get from your local hardware store. In the process, we find something quite interesting, particularly in the darker color, like Monument. As soon as we mix the ceramic bead additives into the paint, it lightened the color. For a fair comparison, we went back to the local hardware store, we asked them to get a color match to the product that we have the ceramic additive. So we are comparing apple to apple. The only difference is whether they got the ceramic coating or not. And you can see from here, sample number three is the normal monument color. And you can see the sample number one with the ceramic additives on, the color is observably lighter and we try to go back to the paint shop and do a color match. So you can see the color is very similar from one another. Just like in the last video, we are going to use the FLIR E95, which is a high-end thermal imaging camera, and also the thermocouple from the back side of the sample. So we are comparing both the contact temperature and also the radiative temperature. Let's have a look at the sample temperature. From the thermal camera, we can see the center temperature is between 54 and a half to 54 and a half, pretty much the same. The normal monument is almost 56 and 57 degree. You can see the shade has more impact compared to whether the ceramic beads are present in the sample. And let's look at the contact temperature. Channel A1 to A3 are the three samples that we just talked about. You can see the first two samples are pretty similar with minimal difference, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 a degree. And then the third one is slightly warmer than the others. So we can see the ceramic bead doesn't do much. And what we can observe from these 14 samples is 
the lighter the shade, the cooler the temperature is. The temperature range from almost 60 degrees in the monument down to what we got in the big, big white is only 32 degrees, which is two to three degrees warmer than the shaded air temperature. As the conclusion from last time, the lighter the color, the better. And it is really, really interesting if we look at the thermal image of the synchronum. If we look at the temperature on the infrared camera, the synchronum appears to be very cold. The reading that we got is only 16 degrees, but there is one pitfall that a lot of inexperienced infrared camera operator fall into, and this is a very good sample which is called the emissivity of the material. To show you the difference, we put a clear packaging tape in the middle of the synchronum and can show you the temperature difference. On the tape, we got the temperature of closer to 35 degrees compared to the 16 degree that is showing on the bare synchronum. The reason of that is the bare synchronum is largely reflecting the temperature of the clear sky, which is very, very cold. So it's not showing me the actual temperature of the surface. To prove this, we can go to the reading of the thermocouple mounted at the back. And the temperature is very close to the tape reading from the thermal camera. As you can see from channel A14, the synchronum is having a temperature 38 and a half which is much closer to the reading from the infrared camera that I read from the packaging tape, not the uh, synchronous surface. And the other very interesting observation we can get from this set of sample is, if you just visually looking at the sample between sample number eight to sample number 13, the shade is very, very similar. It's only a minuscule shade difference. But if we look at the temperature, the surf mist and the surf mist with ceramic is closer to 40 degree at a 30 to 31 degree air temperature, which is a significant uh, temperature rise. But if we look at the vivid white or the dolphorite, the temperature is under 35 degree. So it almost cut the temperature rise by half with so similar shade. And that is a very good reminder. Go to as light color, as close to white as you can. And the other observation is very, very similar to what we got in the previous video. The added ceramic in the coating doesn't do much. The normal vivid white is the coolest, even though the temperature difference is very, very minuscule. As a conclusion from this experiment, once again, for the best performance of your roof, the lighter color, the better. The closer to white, the better. Having said that, there are also other important aspects you need to consider, like the longevity of the paint and how easy it can be cleaned. It doesn't matter how white your roof is, if it's hard to clean, it will eventually become gray. Hopefully it helps you.